ducks! Hey, warped! What's up, brother? How goes? Eh, Ghost is trying to get the uh, data center updated. We're all maxed out again, so... Oh, yeah. Time you look, uh, time. professional at work today. Yeah, you know, you know, I've got a business here to run, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's news with you? I was just heading out to, uh, Brass Station to check out the trains, make sure they're still running over there. Yeah, yeah, important things in life, right? Yeah. <laughs> so other than that, uh, anything exciting happening? Ooh, these are nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if there's any trains coming in there. Can you see? Because I can't. I'll put my hand on the corner. I'll... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had that problem before. It's safe. Other than this hole in the ground, it's safe. Uh, I blame VST for that one. Always and partially you, because there's a button there, so that's probably you. You know, it... it there might, mm, I, I won't deny that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I put these lights in for safety, because you really can't see what's coming out of the station. I put them in at the park gate as well. Cool. Well, I assume down there. Yeah. Well, one nice. of them just kind of in the distance. Excelente. Excelente. So what else is going on in the train world? Um, well, a few months ago we uh, put these passenger trains up on the line. Uh, you were there for that. I made a video about a whole bunch of things, and there's a whole bunch of detail I wanted to include but never could. Do tell. <laughs> All right, so I guess we'll start off with the uh, the ticket dispenser here. I showed off this thing. You know, you click it, you choose a line, you purchase ticket. It gives you tickets. The fun things in life. The fun things in life, yes. Um, and then you throw the ticket on accident because your mouse doesn't work properly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put my suit back on here because this feels really slow. <laughs> um, so the computer for this is actually hidden on the side here. That's Carpenter's door. Oh, uh -huh, I love those things. Yeah, they're pretty awesome. Um, actually, I think, yeah, there's a door handle on the other side here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's only a one-way secret. It's, it's a one-way secret. secret, yeah. You can find your way out. But yeah, that, that's the computer there, and it's actually facing towards the back. Uh, that's just because of an old design. I was going to have the door in the back, but uh, that obviously changed. Um, but if we click on the computer here, um, we can see where you can edit destinations. Now, of course, this was originally destinations and not routes. Uh, originally, I was going to have uh, a destination for Forestry Town, destination for Rurik's Town, destination for Games Town, destination for Mining. And then things changed. Yeah, and then things changed. So I basically converted destinations into routes and uh, gave the route an, a property for um, what what towns they they service. So Westline, that had the whole, whole string in there saying Forester Town, Mining Town, and Arabian Nights. Uh -huh. So one ticket to rule them all, or at least the direction you want to go. Yeah. Um... So, to edit the destinations, it's on the computer right now, and I use the Parallel API to, uh, so that you can edit edit destinations while, I, I could edit a destination here, add a destination, and Warp could be up there buying a ticket, if you really wanted to. So why don't I just add, oops, random selection, random destination ticket is random. Are you still there? <laughs> Random places. So now if we click click on the screen here, we get leg. There's a random destination there. There is. <laughs> and one of the things that I did when I was programming this is um uh the splash screen um not only acts to make it look nice, but it also gives me a chance, if I were to edit something back here, uh, um, it doesn't load the destinations until after the splash screen is clicked. So that way it's not loading it, and then if I edit it, in, it's it's actually going to be updated. It's gotcha. going to be the proper updated list. That Are you still the there? Next time somebody uses it. Yes, I'm still there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm just well, less belligerent than it used to be. Yeah, it's it's not as belligerent as it used to be. I I calmed it down a little bit. Very cool, man. 
All right. So um, what else is news? Uh, not really much news. More technical explanation, I guess. I, I'll let you uh, take us downstairs and show off the timer system that we used for the trains like that to be waiting here. Oh, yeah. Here they are the sitting here waiting. Yeah, for some reason there's a, a second train sitting here for the same line. I'm not sure what that's all about, but uh, um, I, I'll explain the system that, that keeps this waiting in a little bit. I want to let Warp's voice be heard. Because <laughs> God knows I don't talk enough. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. Have, have we really gone through and actually shown off the uh, the drop off and pick up areas in here? I think I think I did when I first made the the breath station video. Okay. Well, I, I mean, if people have seen it, forgive me if I repeat myself. We've got the uh, all the lines coming in. As Tox already said, we changed the architecture so that uh, we have trains going in the cardinal directions now. So. For example, the West Line will actually visit forestry and mining in Arabian Nights towns. Um, and so what we did for kind of simplicity's sake is we've got, you can see four different lines here, and I have them color-coded just for fun. Um, and they come into this side here and stop for a short, like, 30 seconds. I think it's so, a minute. I think on this side it's 30 seconds. Oh, okay. I, I can check the times, but nevertheless, it's a, it's yeah. a shorter duration for people to disembark. And then on the other side here... Um, they're set for, I think by default, we have it set for a minute. This can be adjusted, but yeah. the and idea is people can a few of them. get down here, get on. And the timing also serves another purpose, which is to allow the trains to get spaced out. You'll see that we had that one train that just took off. We don't want to have this one right on its heels because, you know, if you have a bunch of buses on a bus line, last thing you want is all the buses <laughs> stopping at the same time in the same place. So uh, in order to do that, we basically uh, did a little more... Red net magicry, as we always do. Um, and you get this wonderful yeah, little right. craziness going on down here. <laughs> now, I ignore this line. This is this is a VST thing, so don't even think about that. But this one controller right here actually controls the systems on both sides. And the basic concept is you have the system set up to uh, oh, sense when a train comes in. Hmm? We were in each other for a second there. Oh. <laughs> <We> have, <laughs> Uh, th this thing is this thing is set up with some very simple code that uh, I can call it code. Really, it's kind of a joke. But anyways, uh, basically, what it does is set up so that when the train comes in, it senses the train comes in with this guy right here, and it'll start the uh, the timer. And that timer has again whatever we set it to. So in this particular case, this one's set for uh, a time interval we think is appropriate for that line. And again, the whole idea is this helps set the trains apart from each other. And then once the timer is up, it will release the train. And once the train tra travels across and out uh, from uh, its departure line here and on out, it will then reset this timer. So you can see this timer right now is starting to go through its little cycle. Uh, yeah, but the timer that, won't actually start until the train comes in. Yeah, to do that, we actually have all the pages uh, filled up on this maxed out controller. If you've never dealt with RedNet controllers, you'll understand this. If you haven't... Um, watch the tutorial. <laughs> they're fun, they're flexible, and if you're not quite up to speed to do computer craft, this is kind of a good mid-level thing. It's kind of above doing vanilla redstone, if you will. It's all kind of crammed into one. But there's only really two pages involved with it. The first page you see right here is this day SR latch, or an RS latch, as I usually call them, that senses the uh, train coming in and starts the whole progress off. You'll see that goes to a variable one. Pause that if you need to look at this further. <laughs> and then the next page is that uh, the second piece we talked about. So you can see the code right here. It's just an AND gate. And all it's doing is simply saying, once this timer is done ticking off, check the line in front of me. If it's clear, go ahead and let me go. That's all it does. Very, very simple. And again, once that clears out, then it'll reset the timer again for you. So pretty straightforward. And, uh, I mean, that's all there really is to it. Again, this is all mirrored on this side as well. And uh, these are independent of each other, so this side here um, will have its duration for whatever it's set to you. So we had 200 on one side and 20 on this side, for example. Um, and then this front section up here is just a simple holding area so that trains that move forward from this will check to make sure that their line on the other side is not already filled up. So Plus Ron Robin. Plus Ron Robin. <laughs> <laughs> the good old Ron Robin. That's that's really about it. We the reason why we did the uh, timer right here is just because it was so much easier to do this timer than it was yeah. to try to code this this logic 
into RedNet. We've had to have multiple controllers, and it would just been... Oh, yeah, of... RedNet, RedNet's limited on the amount of time that it does. Yeah, that so... That it allows us to do. This one I forgot about out. that. Yeah, that was that was a that was a fun thing. The the red net yeah. timer only gave us a, a pff, like twelve seconds or something like that. So <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. Wasn't exactly ideal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we I, I kind of beat my head around this. I I, I have to get my hat off to the Yankee because he got down and looks at it and Yankee goes, uh, dude, just use the uh, Project Red timer. I was like, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, Yankee. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 all it was. It's you know, yeah. typical, like I said, it's my typical uh, you know shenanigans with uh, oops. Um, <laughs> let me turn my suit on here. My typical shenanigans with uh, red net controllers. This this is what happens with us, us non computer uh, computer craft uh, savvy luddites. I need to get uh, stuff done technically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the last thing that I uh, wanted to talk about is. Um, all the logic that we have here, warped is down in the basement again. Yeah, you know, kind of forgot where I was going. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, <laughs> you're saying. Um, all the logic that prevents trains from ramming into each other. Warped had already kind of hinted at a couple of them. Um, but, uh, um, so, let's see here. Let's, let's start on the departure line. So the departure line, once that timer is up downstairs, um, it won't just send the train off. It it goes on to page two, which is that AND gate, which makes sure that the line ahead is free as well. So if there, for whatever reason, is still a train sitting here, because this whole thing here is round robin, so that only one of these trains will depart at a time, and it will wait until the train is out of the Brat station before another train uh, departs this line here. So... If lot I were st- of lot of logic for anti train up train action. Yeah. So if there were a train right here and that guy's timer went up, he wouldn't go forward until this train had a chance to leave. Going a little bit farther back, um, again something that Warped had uh, had hinted at. This redneck controller on the back, um, its primary purpose is again round robin. For these four lines, so uh, it's a it's a standard system that we use. Um, it only allows one of these trains to leave at once, and only once this output line is free. Um, now this this one in particular, though, this was just a little bit so that if uh, like this blue line here, this is north line. If there is already a train on the north line departure. It also checks that before it turns this holding track on. That way a train as we as we already saw a train doesn't go if there's a train here ready to to go to the departure line, it doesn't go until there's actually room on the departure line for it to go to. Looking at the red net? Yep, just going through the pages here while you talk. Sure. Yeah, I'll give it Quick cycle for my viewers in case you want to pause. And you'll see that a bunch of these pages I'm going through right now are all, you know, the same pages, so to speak, um, just because they're the line by line. That first page went by. This is just a square wave timer. This is our little timer set we use for the round robin, and that's all its function is. Beyond that, you'll see the actual root of the logic, so to speak, on page three, and then page four, you'll see how it kind of rings out. Yeah. So. Definitely, yeah, so uh, our normal was... red robin, round robin, this page four here, the pass through, normally we just have this outputting to holding tracks, but instead we have it go to a variable, and the variable gets anded with the, with the fact that the line ahead is free. Yeah, and I happen, just for my own failing memory, happen to like to do uh, themed colors. You'll see I have the, the dark green, the light green, the dark blue, and light blue, and so on. It just makes things a lot easier because it's a... One color is set to be the sensor, one set to be the trigger, and so on. Yeah. Now, if we go a little bit farther back, this one's a little bit more simple, simplistic. Uh, we have another oh, holding like track here. <laughs> <clears throat> Feeling a bit stuffed up, sorry. Um, uh, so this this holding track here, this is basic ra- rail... R- what's this mod called? Railcraft? <laughs> <laughs> Choo-choo craft! <laughs> wow, that was interesting. 
Um, this is basic uh, Railcraft logic that basically says if there's a train in the line ahead, stop here. So that's if uh, that's for the case of if two trains happen to arrive at the same time, one's still unloading, and another one comes in behind it, it will stop here and wait. Or if there's a train waiting up here for a train to leave here, and another train comes in, it will stop here. That's actually probably a better example in this line, because West Line does actually have four trains. It's a big line. Uh, yeah, it is a big line. Um, and then if we go back even farther, um, uh, this holding track here, this is a standard standard uh, piece of, of our roundabouts. Because um, uh, the block section only goes up until this point, and then waits until the line ahead is free. Now, in this case, the line ahead won't be free if there's a train, because these trains are long enough that they'll actually hang on to this line. So this line won't be free. And that is a feature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in in intentional uh, intentional feature. We want to make sure that the trains would clog up, basically, the appropriate block signal areas so that we didn't have any train overlap. Yeah. And... And we set we put these uh, these holding tracks here. Uh, let's look at West Line again. That way, because we were originally going to have this set so that if any of these lines were still, or no, we were trying to do some some crazy system to ch to hold the train here if its line wasn't available. Uh, one, it failed, and two, that clogs <laughs> up the roundabout. Yep. So holding it here doesn't quite clog up the roundabout yet. We're basically trying to get as much flexibility to cram as many trains in as we possibly can within reason. Yeah, exactly. So and within the space we had. Yeah, and we in this particular situation too, you have to understand that the architecture we went with, as we said, is sending out trains in cardinal directions. But please understand when we talk about sending trains out to do basically routes, like I said, like a bus system. One of the routes we have, for example, is the north route going out to Gamestown where BDA does his uh, big arena. That's about a 2,500 plus block travel. So having yeah. one train going out there and back doesn't make sense. It'll take way too long if you sit in here waiting for it. You can dang yeah. walk. You know, That's faster. 20 minutes. Exactly. So we yeah. need to have a way to have many different trains all performing the exact same function. So all these trains are coded the same, ticketed the same. They're identical in every aspect. They're just the you know, locomotive one through whatever. And this way, this system allows us to ensure that we're setting those timings we showed to keep the trains separated. So if three of them come in at once, there's room for them to queue, and then they're released at a set interval to try to spread them back out. So if for any reason anything happens and trains you know, do actually bunch up a little bit, every stop that they're going to go to is going to help space them back out. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've gone through all the, all the train on train action preventative measures <laughs> all the way from, from the, the departure of the departure line, all the way to the arrival of the arrival lines. There is one more small little, uh, preventative measure I have to take. And this is... I'm, I'm going to blame Warp for this one. <laughs> <laughs> that is back here. You may have seen it when I was uh, running was running the line. But there's a holding track here. Yeah, I know. You were supposed to blame VSD. I'll blame VSD for the, tr the, the day that the trains just randomly reversed on me. That was totally VSD's fault. <laughs> true that. Um, yes, true that. Um, but... Uh, to that point, this this holding track here is one final measure. This is monitoring um, that this red line is 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 free. Uh, this red line is the west line, um, so west line trains will depart from here. But where it got a little bit tricky is uh, if you notice, all these lines have a routing switch motor. This is routed to north because that's the north line. This is routed to east, this is routed to south, and this is routed to west, except there is none here because there's, there's no switch. This is also where trains will go if they happen to not have a ticket, which does unfortunately sometimes happen. Sometimes I do find trains on, running around with no ticket and I don't have a chance to put them on, put a ticket in them. Wild trains are very horrible and dangerous. Yes. 
And where it gets tricky is when, when Warp put these colors down, I didn't think anything about this. If we look on this side, this is west, this is south, this is east, this is north. North gets the overflow trains. So what, what I was finding was happening was there would be a train on the line with no ticket and it would arrive here. In the meantime, there's some west train waiting to depart. Um, but this train with no ticket comes to the end, waits its turn, its its turn is up, it, it can, it can uh, go on to the departure line. And the departure line is free for this line, which is the blue line here, which is not where that train ends up going. <laughs> <laughs> A little cross-track action. Yeah, so I had to put this this little holding track in just just as a pre preventative measure. And this is just to... this is actually a lot of of what me and Tox have dealt with uh, time and time again. If you're actually trying to set up a, a a big rail system like we have, you have to you have to remember the cardinal rule that we've learned. If it's plausible, it will happen. You you, you yes. can't you can't go by statistics and say, well, the chance of X, Y, or Z happening are pretty slim. It doesn't matter if the priest slim. If they can happen, they'll happen, and they have many yeah. times. So this type of, of preventative maintenance, yeah, there's probably a more elegant way to do this. But the base of the boils down to is you have to you have to basically have a system in place that is 100 percent because if you don't, then it is guaranteed to happen. And we learn <laughs> catastrophically and explosively in some cases over yeah. and over again. <laughs> For example, I had a uh, a. Um, we were talking one day about removing the, re changing the roundabout so that they don't look behind them because you're never going to, trains are never going to go out the same exit that they came in. I was on a train that had its ticket, it was fully routed properly, it still managed to go out the wrong exit. <laughs> Which would have crashed if, if there, if there happened to be a train out there that, uh, that it didn't check for. It can happen. Like I said, <laughs> it's just one of those things. And uh, yep. just, just in case you're kind of lost as to, well, how is the train that doesn't have a ticket get in here? That's because the routing tables outside in those roundabouts that we've talked about before, those roundabouts are those uh, switches are set to monitor trains for their color signatures. So this guy out here, he's routing anything that's a blue and white train down into the bar Brat Watch Station. Out. Hi, whoa, jeez. Um, <laughs> anything that, that that's blue and white is going to head into the brass station, even if it's ticketless. Everybody inside here runs on tickets, so they monitor what the ticket is inside the train. And as Taxa said, we've had interesting situations come up where the trains lose their tickets for possibly a variety of reasons, but nevertheless. So that's yeah. that. That's that. And I think that's uh, all we have to talk about. Trains agree. You agree? I agree. Trains agree. All right. Well, let's uh, let's do an F five uh, um, outro here in front of the Brat sign. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> hey, look! It's my back of my head. This is not very exciting for an outro. Oh wait. Oh. oh yeah. There we go. Brat. Okay. Oh, this, this is very go. dramatic too. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, that's uh, that's all that we have for you today. So thank you guys for watching. Yeah. And, and have a good life. Bye! Bye! Wow, that waveform is massive. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> she likes waveforms. <laughs>